Jesus has risen, but not where you might expect. An earthquake strikes Canada. We will tell you who is to blame. And later, the government finally confirms a Bigfoot sighting. We'll tell you where. All this and more here on MU180. With five-time Emmy Award losing lead anchor, Kevin Ellis. Marco Bichinich, weather. Zach Myers, sports. And your reporters from the field, Roberto Vaccaro and Trayvon Wesley. It's MU180 at 7 o'clock. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kevin Ellis. Well, Easter was this past weekend, and we had a Jesus sighting. MU180 has received an amateur drawing of a witness of this event. Oh, yep, there he is. That's Jesus ripping the heart out of a Marquette basketball fan. In other news, a girl in Wyoming is being charged with assault after an April Fool's joke went terribly wrong. The girl pulled the prank on her boyfriend by telling him that she was pregnant. The situation become heated enough that the girl stabbed her boyfriend. It is a lesson for all you kids out there to use protection if your girlfriend is a psycho. And in Canada, a geographic nightmare occurred this morning when the entire country sank an entire foot. Scientists were perplexed by the event and could not initially come up with any answers. TMZ later notified the U.S. Geological Survey that the cause was Michael Moore landing in Toronto for a film documentary. Mystery solved there, folks. And in Georgia, a man was charged with possession of an illegal substance after trying to pay his bar tab with marijuana. What is even more shocking is that the bar refused this offer, despite the marijuana was being valued at two times the cost of his tab. A poor business decision, if you ask me. And in international use, the F-22 fighter jets were deployed to North Korea earlier this week amid tensions in the region. The jets are worth $400 million apiece. The United St States owns 178 of them, and they have never been used in war. Thus, as of now, we have spent more than $71 billion on planes that just sit in a garage. So let me put my two cents in. The money could buy 140 million iPads, 5 billion lap dances, and 71 billion chick McChickens. You know, is it worth it? I think not. And finally, a male test subject for Rogaine for Men is now completely covered in hair. The test subject, Neil Johnson, took one of Rogaine's trial pills and began growing hair in places, places he has never had hair before. Johnson's neck, lower back, and forehead are all now covered in hair. The positive? Johnson, who stands at six foot eight, is being called by the Department of the Interior as the first ever Bigfoot. And that's your news. We now turn it on over to Kevin Landgraf, who has a special report of his Easter break for us. Kevin. Hey, Kev. Let me give you my full report of what I saw over Easter. I know it's an important time for many people. A good amount of people join the church, and a lot of other people join Weight Watchers. The culprit, my peeps. And no, I'm not talking about my gang. Yes, it is true that I didn't choose the thug life. The thug life chose me. But I'm talking more about the delicious sugary snacks we're all familiar with. I'm actually not familiar. Can you explain them to me, please? Well, Kev, you have excellent muscle tone, and I know you haven't had a carb since 92, so let me explain. They're little bunny or bird-shaped snacks that really are marshmallows cleverly disguised in thick sugar. Honestly, they're not even good. They just feel really cool. I mean, I can make a bed out of them and sleep on them, but I digress. Candy has long been a tradition of Easter. You don't have to sugarcoat it, Kevin, but was there anything else you noticed about Easter? I think you mentioned it, yes. Is it acceptable now for people to eat McDonald's on Easter? I don't think it's ever been acceptable to eat it. Hmm, it is true, but especially on Easter. I mean, for crying out loud, try a salad. Really, McDonald's? You know what you're getting there. Their burglars are similar to the way I like my women. Hairy, old, and with big buns. Big buns? Just a little cushion for the pushing. Well, do they like sesame seeds on the buns? Gosh, no, I'm not some perv. Uh, I meant the burger buns. Oh. Okay, uh, let's get away from this seedy part of the report and back to the point of it. Easter? Well, of course, Kev, of course. The last thing I noticed, people in mass. Sure, I go Easter morning. I love my boy JC, but I just can't survive the mass on Saturday. Anyway, I guess Easter brings out a lot of love, and that's good, especially with 50-year-old parents. Listen, I'm glad the flames still are burning bright, but the whole touchy-feely thing, maybe you should pay a little less attention to each other and more attention to your 12-year-old son in the trench coat. It was 65 and sunny, and a trench? It raises questions. Hmm, you should kind of look like our news guy Vladimir, actually. Yeah, hmm. what an interesting animal he was. Indeed. Well, that's all for this, Kitten. Back to you, Kev. Thank you, Kevin. 
And when we return, Marco will be returning uh, with a weather report from the field. We'll be right back. Thanks for sticking around. Up next, Marco was sent out to do the weather, but I can guarantee you that he went off on topic. Now let's see what he has in store for us on this week's weather report. Well, you look around you out here and you're going to see that it is a little bit blustery. If you're going to take a look at one of those streamers there, you'll see it blowing. That indicates wind. And up in the sky, it's blue, but there are some clouds, which who knows with those things. I mean, I'm not a trained weatherman. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm here. I'm just, they bring the camera, they said. Bring your microphone, they said. Here. Here you can see, Sebastian, is that your name? It's my name. Where are you from? Sweden. Which one? There's only one. No, there's two. There's one up north, the country Sweden, next to Finland, and next to Norway, and next to Denmark. Yeah, so there's like four Swedens, right? So Michael, tell us, what'd you do over uh, Easter break? Uh, over Easter break? Did you have a lot of ham? Uh, did you eat anything at all? I did eat food. What did you eat? Yes, I had. Did you eat a human being? I did not. Are you a cannibal, sir? No. Would you please uh, explain to people why you eat people? Sorry. What is a map trip? Market Action Program. We do service and... And they lay maps out on the ground and you just fall right over them? One Sweden. But you said like there's Denmark and Finland in that? But that's not Sweden. Eh, uh, it's Sweden. It's Scandinavia. Which is Sweden. Do you, sir, do, do you even lift? Do you even lift? Look at my muscles, man. What? What I, muscles? Exactly. 25 pounds is heavy. I see where you're going with this one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't eat people. You don't eat people? No. What do you eat? I, I eat. Why are you taking so long to answer these questions, sir? Um, all, all we want to know is what do you eat, sir? We were actually working with Habitat for Humanity. And uh, so. Who's, which humans need habitats? All humans. Have you released them into their natural habitats? Are you holding people in cages, sir? Not yet. Please Bring come, break come closer. Break. Whichever you prefer. Um, Easter break, I went and got my hair done. And it looks fantastic. Thanks. What about you? You obviously did not get your hair done. I did not. Yeah, I know. Now tell me, are, is any of these lockers yours, sir? Nope. Why not? Because I'm better than lockers. A pardon? I'm above lockers. O only by about an inch. Not as much as you. No. You're, you're a lot taller. I am. You look like you could beat me up. Scandinavia is, uh, Sweden is a part of Scandinavia. Yes. Yes, that is true. So they're all Sweden. We built the house first, then we released it. So there are still humans in cages? Yes. How do you live with yourself? You know, Imprisoning your fellow human beings, sir. There's a lot of injustices in the world that... And Habitat for Humanity is promoting these? We're trying to solve this problem. Solve the problems. You're solving the problems of the people in the cages? I'm just one man. This is hard. Who decided that there should be a weatherman? Why am I here? Why are any of us here? Thank you for that riveting report, Marco. Up next, we have Zach, and he's going to tell us about something called the Women's NCAA Tournament. I know nothing of it. Zach, please tell us more. It took us long enough, but we are out of the worst few months of the year. November is over, December is over, January is over, February is over, and March is over. It's time for another 162 games of baseball. Thank God. The San Diego Padres may have gotten creamed in their first game of the season, but I still have hope. That's why I love the beginning of the baseball season. Every team still has a chance. Now next week, I'm pretty sure we will all agree that the Houston Astros and Miami Marlins seasons will both be over. This season, the big story is with the LA Dodgers. Will they find a way to spend more money? They have the highest payroll in baseball, even higher than the New York Yankees. The Dodgers payroll for the season is $239 million. Dear God, how much money do you really need to spend? The Dodgers are still trying to find out more ways to spend money. Some of their ideas include free tickets and concessions to reduce income, paying parking attendants $20,000 an hour, and buying their own replica of a World Series trophy. So here's to the Dodgers for having lots of money and then going through it faster than freshmen go through a bottle of Burnett's. Now let's talk, talk March Madness. None of you believe me when I told you that Florida Gulf Coast was going to win it all. Well, even though they got knocked out of the tournament, they still made history to become the first 15th seeded team to make it to the Sweet 16. So suck it, ESPN, and you don't know sports. 
The final four is set with ninth seeded Wichita State, fourth seeded Michigan and Syracuse, and number one seeded Louisville. Yahoo offered $1 million before the start of March Madness for anyone who could predict a perfect bracket. Doesn't seem that hard to do, does it? Well, the odds in predicting a perfect bracket are 1 in 127 billion. How many people correctly predicted the final four out of 3 million brackets on Yahoo? Three people. Yes, three people. That was smart, Yahoo. Oh, yeah, you could have a million dollars if you pick a perfect bracket. Meanwhile, they're sitting in their back room laughing and smoking cigars saying, ha, 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 yes, we are so rich. Well, congratulations to Marquette for making it to the Elite Eight for the first time since 2003. There is nothing else really positive to say, so I'm not going to say it. Finally, I found out this week that there's a March Madness tournament for women, too. Isn't that cute? I guess it is officially called the PMS tournament. Well, they had their final four set, and it looks to be a match that no one is going to watch. For those of you looking to watch women's basketball, you can tune in to the final four games, which will be broadcasted on Comedy Central. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Zach. And when we come back from our break, Gilberto and Trayvon will join us with a field report when MU180 returns. Hello again, and this week, Trayvon and Hilberto step out of the studio and have a special report for us. On over to you guys. Hi, this is Gilberto. And this is Trayvon. And this is MU180, and we're here at the AMU trying to figure out Marquette's um, intelligence, you know, trying to figure out if they know and they're up to date with their current events. So we're going to go see. So we're walking around talking about current events, and we were wondering if you guys had heard of the tragic tsunami that happened in North Carolina, and what were your reactions to it? You go first. I did not hear about that tragedy, though. How about, what do you, th I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. How many people are Oh, yeah, there's a lot of deaths. Really? Yeah. That's awful. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, we can just help out. Um, there's probably some organizations out there going for it, so you can probably Google it. What are your reactions, Noble? I'm horrified by it. I think it's really bad what happened. It's really bad. Well, thank you for participating. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are with them. Did we, I'm sorry if we interrupted, but this is really important. Now, did you hear about the tsunami? Yes. Yes? No, it was actually in North Carolina. It, ha it swiped out half of the state. Oh, wait, my friend actually goes to school there, I think so. Unless you it up. No. Now, did you hear about the Easter Bunny attack in, like, Virginia? No. No? So what happened was a guy that was dressed up in the Easter Bunny, like, outfit, he attacked a bunch of cats. Just cats, like, they actually found a field with a bunch of dead cats and a man in the Easter Bunny outfit. Did you hear about that on CNN? I don't watch CNN. You don't watch CNN? How did you feel, though, like, watching it? Like, how did you feel hearing about it just now? What was your reaction? Can you say it again, please? C could I say it again about the dead Easter Bunny attack on the cats? Did you hear about the tsunami in North Carolina? Oh, God, no. I'd be really culturally uninformed, though. That's OK. Um, it kind of wiped out a county. Yeah, now I'm feeling really uninformed. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. Now, you know that Beyonce, Queen B, and Rihanna is on a world tours this year. How do you feel about that? Um, not, nothing special, really. That's highly disrespectful. What about you, Nyla? Well, I love both of them, so I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. You're on my team. All right, next current event. I don't know. We'll come back. It was like... A, a guy dressed up in like an Easter Bunny outfit. And well, like actually look at the camera. He was dressed up in an Easter Bunny outfit. And you can look at me. Um, and <laughs> he actually, it's hard to believe. I'm laughing about it, but it's not funny. He actually like attacked a bunch of cats. Like a bunch of cats. It was a massacre. Peter was infuriated actually. Just, did they find out why? I don't know why. They said that he had some illness or something. But yeah, was your Easter good, though? Did you hear about the tsunami in North Carolina? I did not. Now, I heard that it swiped out half of the entire state, killing millions of people. How do you feel about that? I don't, I don't think that's true. Why don't you think that's true? It's a tsunami. I feel like I would have heard about that if it killed millions of people. But tsunamis are natural disasters. It's 
true. I'm not arguing. It's that. true. There you go, Jack. Thank you. You're, you've been a trooper. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. How do you feel about this beverage? No. Now, did you hear that P. Diddy's actually enrolling his son into Marquette? I did not hear that. So serious. He's thinking about majoring in broadcast and electronic communications. Oh, that's pretty awesome. What's your major? Uh, international business and supply chain management. Ooh. And there you have it, folks. Again, it's Trayvon Wesley and... Gilberto. And you saw t that some people knew what they were talking about, and some people, of course, did not know what they were talking about. But the most important thing is you were informed. It's been a fun one. Back to you, Kevin. That's what I'm talking about, gentlemen. Good work. Thank you for joining us this week on MU 180. Sorry, you know, you're a little dirty there, Kevin. Would you like some pure real? I don't have any choice at this point. We'll see you next week when we are, you know, I don't know, we got two weeks left. We'll see you. Yeah, give me some more of that.